Good morning. I'm going to be reading Michael Jordan. Um, fifth graders are doing biographies. So um, Mr. Chu had asked me to read a book about mm, someone famous. So I picked Michael Jordan for your class. This morning on um, January 29th, there was only two fifth graders that showed up to class today, but that's okay. Um, we are going to read Michael Jordan. I'm going to try to finish reading the book. If I can read the book and post it, great. If I only give you guys like a couple chapters, then I'll come back and I will continue reading Michael Jordan to finish it. Um, so with that being said, let's get started. Michael Jordan. Everybody knows that this is the front cover of a book. This is the spine of the book. And this is the back cover of a book. Um, the person that writes the words is the author, and the author of the story is Kirsten Anderson. We also all know that the person that draws the pictures is the illustrator, and the illustrator of this book is uh, Dee Dee. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name because I don't want to mess it up, so we're just going to call her Dee Dee, okay? So Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. As we all know, Michael Jordan is one of Miss B's favorite basketball players. Um, I love his shoes. We'll get into that. I'll probably go off on a couple of off stories as I'm reading. Um, the intro. Who is Michael Jordan? There was less than one minute to go in the 1982 College Basketball Championship game. One of the biggest events in sports. In 1982, Miss B was just born. The Hoyas, Georgetown University's men's basketball team had taken a one-point lead over their rival, the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina. With 32 seconds left, Carolina coach Dean Smith called a timeout so he could discuss their next moves with his players. The team in their white and blue uniforms gathered around their coach. He knew, he knew that Georgetown would carefully guard James Worthy and Sam Perkins, two UNC players who had become big stars. Coach Smith had decided who else could take the shot at scoring a basket if Worthy and Perkins couldn't get the free, couldn't get free from defenders. He thought the team should try to get the ball to Michael. Michael Jordan was a 19-year-old freshman at UNC in 1982. Coach Dean Smith rarely let freshmen play. He thought the first-year students needed to watch and learn from the bench before they were ready to play big college games. But Michael stood out. He was quick and could jump high. He was tough and energetic. Even better, he loved to work and learn. He practiced hard. He listened to his coaches, his coaches' instructions. Coach Smith knew he was different. He put Michael on the starting lineup for the first game of the season. He stayed there all year. Now, with seconds left of the, on the clock, Coach Smith was going to trust the team's chance at the championship to the freshman, Michael Jordan. Everyone knew he had the talent to make the shot. But even more importantly, Michael had the confidence. Some athletes could scare, sorry, some athletes would be scared by this big moment. They might be afraid of making a mistake. And they certainly didn't want to be the one to lose the game. Michael was another kind of athlete. He wanted to take the shot. The timeout ended and the players got ready to go back to the court. Their coach, had only one thing to say. Knock it in, Michael. The clock started again. Georgetown players swarmed Worthy and Perkins. Michael waited on the other side of the court. With 15 seconds left, James Black passed the ball to him. Michael caught it and jumped it in the air. The ball left his hand and it sailed 16 feet to the basket. It swooshed in the Tar Heels take, sorry, it swished in and the Tar Heels took a one point lead. The crowd roared. Georgetown had time to make another shot, but their players couldn't seem to score. The clock ticked down to zero. The UNC Tar Heels were 
the 1982 College Basketball Championships. After the game, Michael told the reporters that he hadn't felt any pressure. It was just another jump shot. There, that was the very first ga game-winning shot Michael made. It was far from the last. He would go on to win six NBA championships and two Olympic gold medals. His name, most va he was named most valuable player five times and played in 14 All-Star games. Many people considered him the greatest basketball player ever and one of the greatest athletes of all times. Okay, that was the introduction. We're gonna go to chapter one, but it shows how he made his jump shot. I know my camera on my side is kinda foggy. I hope it comes out clear when I post it. If not, you guys can check out this book from the library. All right. Um, chapter one, too short. Michael Jeffrey Jordan was born in Brooklyn, New York on February 17, 1963. His parents, James and Dolores, were both from North Carolina. James had moved the family to New York so that he could go to school. Michael had an older brother, James, known as Ronnie, and his sister, Dolores, called Sis. Another brother, Larry, was just a year older than him, the family returned to North Carolina when Michael was five months old. His sister, Rosalind, was born the next year. In the family of five, Michael wanted to be the center of attention. He danced, sang, told jokes, played tricks. Sis said he'd always loved to have an audience. There's a picture of him being little. The Jordans moved to Wilmington, North Carolina when Michael was five years old. They could be closer, sorry, so they could be closer to James's job at General Electric Plant. James is his dad. James loved to play baseball. He taught Michael and Larry to play as soon as they could hold the bat. Soon they were playing in little leagues. As they got older, they also became interested in basketball. Their father put up the basketball hoop for the boys, and later he built a court for them. When Michael was nine, he watched the 1972 Olympic gold medal games between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Americans lost. Michael told his mom, I'm going to be in Olympics one day, and I'm going to make sure we win. That's a very important part of the book. Okay, remember that. It's a little insight of how basketball was invented when you're reading the book, okay? I'm gonna read that part before we get back to Michael Jordan. James Naismith, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, so we'll just call him James, and the invention of basketball. James, 1861 to 1939, so it's the year he was born to the year he passed away, study at McGill University and became a physical education teacher, a PE teacher. In 1891, he took a job at the YMCA International Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts. The head of the school asked James to invent a game that would keep the restless young men active during a long, cold winter. James nailed two peach baskets high on the opposite wall and told the players to try to score by tossing a soccer ball into the team's the other team's basket he also posted a list of 13 rules james had invented basketball the game quickly became popular james moved to university of kansas to teach physical education Many of the students he coached on the basketball team there became coaches themselves. James' influences is still felt today. The College Player of the Year is given the James Award and every year new members are introduced into 
It really says his last name, Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Many of his original 13 rules are still in use. Again, if I said his last name wrong, I apologize. Anybody can correct me. All right, so that's how basketball was invented. They had baskets, and on one pole over there, he nailed it and said, go shoot up, because that's the other team's. And on that side, he had another basket, and that's how it was. A pole and two baskets is how basketball was invented. I didn't even know that. All right, we got about five more minutes. We'll make this a 15-minute read, okay? Five more minutes. Michael and Larry played against each other at any chance they got. Michael adored Larry. Larry is Michael's brother. And looked up at him. And looked up to him. But he always wanted to beat him when they played. Everyone agreed that Larry was a fantastic athlete. He was very strong and quick. Most people thought that Larry could have been a star basketball player. But there was, not, there was one problem. Everyone expected basketball players to be tall. And Larry was short. But Michael kept growing. Soon he was taller than Larry. He became an outstanding baseball player. At the age of 12, he was named the state's most valuable player after his little league team won the state championship. He kept getting better at basketball too. In 1977, Michael entered the ninth grade. Every morning he came to the gym before school to practice basketball with his friend Leroy Smith. Michael was only five feet five five feet seven inches tall that's probably like that much more taller than miss b so you guys know how tall miss b is add about that much more to me um but michael was fast and could jump high they had both made the middle school the middle school team in one game the team scored 54 points michael scored 44 of those points. In 1978, Michael and Leroy began their sophomore year at Laney High School. They both tried out for the university basketball team. Leroy made it, but Michael didn't. Later, the coaches said that they knew how good Michael was, but his height was important in basketball. And the coaches felt that they needed someone tall, like Leroy to compare to the other teams. But Michael didn't know the truth. He only knew that he hadn't made the team. He went home and he cried in his room. He thought about quitting, but his mom encouraged him to stick it out. One of our vocabulary words in PE is encouragement, encouraged. Michael took the, her advice and played with the junior varsity team during the first year at Laney. He worked hard to put on a show averaging 28 points per game. It was obviously how talented he was on the court. There's a picture of him. At first he had number 45. If that's backwards, I'm sorry. Michael was worried though. He wanted to have great skills and to be taller. He prayed every day. He hung from a bar, hopping on sketches, hoping to stretch, sorry, sketches, hoping to stretch himself out by 16, Michael was 5'10". That was taller than most of the people in the Jordan family. It seemed unlikely he would grow much more than that. One day, his cousin came in to visit the Jordans. He was six feet seven. Suddenly, Michael had hope. There were taller people than him and his family after all. Michael had another worry. His sophomore year wore on. He had constant pain in his knees. The doctors took x-rays of Michael's legs and discovered good news. The x-rays showed that he was growing fast and he had a lot more growing to do. The pain was probably related to his rapid growth. When he returned to school for his junior year in the fall of 1979, 
Miss B's not born yet. Miss B's brother is born now. Uh, Michael was six feet three and still growing. He easily made the varsity team. Michael was offered two jersey numbers. He chose 23 because he hoped to be half as good as the player of his brother Larry who wore the number 45. Now he had the height to match his skills and people beyond high school were beginning to notice. All right, we will stop right there. I will continue on chapter two on another video. There's a picture of him playing and then the picture before that of him trying to be taller and hanging. Right there, he hang. He hung from his door. That's it. And then down there, it shows him with the doctors, with his x-rays. Okay. All right. I will be back, and I will read chapter two and three for another 15 minutes. Later, guys.